c'è già una che parla? Hello. Hello, welcome to the Q&A of The Invisible Fight by Rainer Sardet. Um, <laughs> what a great screening. Uh, I had seen the film on a small screen, on the big screen, I must say really congratulations. It's, it's a blast. I would love to listen to Black Sabbath the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the sound, the sound was like, I was blown away of how the sound was uh, worked on. And of course, the, the photography, the DOP, we have the DOP here as well, Mark. Congratulations. <laughs> But not only, I mean, uh, <clears throat> you're uh, magnetized by, by the, this trio of actors that we have seen. Um, Ursel Tick, the protagonist, Raphael, great job. <laughs> Rita, played by Esther Kuntu. And Karel Poga for Irine. <laughs> Behind the scenes, those that made it happen, uh, producer Katrin Kisa. <laughs> Alice Gelze. <laughs> and uh, Amanda Livano. So just uh, to explain a little, this is an Estonian, Greece, Finland, Latvian co-production. And as you can see from the credits at the end and the beginning of film, it's quite a, a tough uh, putting together financially and also to please all the partners. How difficult was it for you, Kat um, Kisa, and the other co-producers to really work uh, on this film and, and made it happen? I'm going to just... Uh 
be very short in this, uh, in this but uh, it started as a Taiwanese, German, Estonian co-production. So it took it took like uh, at least a year to uh, to make it as a uh, German, Taiwanese, uh, Greece, uh, Latvian, uh, Finnish, <laughs> Japanese co-production, and in the end uh, we made it with the uh, with the uh, Latvia. Greece, Estonia, Finland, and with the help from uh, Japan, so it was quite a quite a kind of like a uh, quite road to uh, to take from the Taiwanese German co-production. Great. Um, so this is a, a very fresh, in my opinion, original and uh, fantastic story telling the world of kung fu with Black Sabbath as a soundtrack, savvy fighting monks and oppressive KGB agents, all together with a love story and attention. Uh, where did the idea come from? Yeah, it seems like a crazy fantasy, but uh, it's based on real person, not, not uh, on a real uh, life story, but uh, uh, there was a monk called uh, Father Raphael who lived in, in uh, Russia in Petchery, and he, he was active in the 70s. So, and uh, he was a car mechanic, and he had a car, he liked speeding. Um, and when I visited this monastery, the same monastery where he lived, um, there was a, an old monk who knew him, uh, and um, I was looking for stories, and he said, ah, he was a hooligan. Uh, and um, so I took uh, this, some elements like a car and his arrogant attitude, but, um, uh, and, and many stories also um, are real stories. Uh, so, um, mm, but just the starting point was, when my friend was uh, in hospital, and I brought a, a book uh, for him, uh, like a present, and uh, this book called uh, "Not of This World," and uh, it was about two young contemporary monks who lived in Russia in the 70s. They both died very, very, very young. And um, a friend of mine said that you have to do a film about monks. So it was also kind of gift. He gave a present mm, in return. So this was the starting point. And then I, I, uh, I made a research. I visited many monasteries in Russia, in, in Greece, and even in Serbia, uh, and uh, collected stories. and. Um, uh, yeah, it was a uh, very surprising uh, journey for me as well. Uh, uh, I didn't expect <laughs> these kind of ideas, uh, what I got. <laughs> Great. Um, the mix of Kung Fu and all the anti-Russian, when I say something stupid, just stop me. All the anti-Russian communism oppression elements like Black Sabbath, long hippie hair, um, the fancy car driving, all, all the religion. Does they have an important layer of social commentary in, in the film, although it's laid below all the comedic moments? Well, um, the Kung Fu and, and uh, religion were banned in the Soviet Union. Uh, and. Um, as I know, uh, many, many uh, young uh, Russian monks were ex-hippies, and um, maybe the church was kind of rebellion, uh, like a, a forbidden uh, fruit, sweet fruit. Um, but yes, uh, Father Rafael had uh, many conflicts mm, with uh, KGB, and uh, yeah, the real Raphael. Uh, 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 and it was, yeah, complicated to, 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 to live um, in monasteries. It, this, this was the only monastery 
in the Soviet Union, you, you mean in Russia, if you think how big uh, the Russia really is, it's, it's quite rare that there was only one, uh, one uh, Orthodox monastery in the Soviet Union. And of course they had uh, conflicts uh, constantly. Uh, and, uh, yeah, with power, with state. And the monastery is uh, just on the border of Estonia, so it's uh, somehow uh, close to uh, Estonia. Yeah, it's very nearby, a few kilometers. All right. Um, is there any questions from the audience? I can open up and then maybe come back with some further questions here. Anyone? Um, for the actors, I know that there was Edith Tsai as a co choreographer on this film. How well difficult was it to prepare, I mean, physically and also to, to do the Kung Fu moves? It was um, pretty playful because uh, <laughs> we didn't need to uh, have like a real kung fu in that sense to present a real uh, kung fu style so we kind of had to make our own kung fu style uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, and uh, we had a good uh, choreographers uh, to help us and uh, together with Rainer and the choreographer and uh, so uh, it was uh, a lot of fun mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, it was also it was combination of two two people, uh, or like three, let's say, yeah. uh, like Reiner's ideas about uh, having this orthodox kung fu, but it was also uh, our, uh, this fight choreographer. But at the same time, it also, uh, there was a huge impact from another one, that is Estonian woman who kind of like worked on the movements throughout the film for, the, for all of the characters to have like a specific style. So, uh, so she was like directing these, uh, uh, characters in that sense. Mm -hmm. And for the character of Rita, there is a, a very big uh, <coughs> feminism uh, character that uh, really makes uh, Raphael change and grow. There is a turning point in which I think uh, Rita's character is, uh, is a, has a central role. How, how difficult was it for, for you as an actress and maybe for Reiner to create this tension between mainly the, the two main characters? I didn't understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, uh, it wasn't difficult. It wasn't, okay. <laughs> no, I think the script was very well written and uh, it was very inspiring. But also, we did a lot of rehearsals with Rainer. And, uh, and in these rehearsals, we figured those characters out. I think we did it together. And uh, that's the best thing, that's the best feeling that I wasn't alone. Uh, and uh, we somehow built the character uh, to this level that when we had the first shooting day, I felt that I totally um, I totally trust Rainer like 120% that I can, I, I will do everything what he wants me to do. <laughs> Um, the character of the mom uh, of Raphael is uh, established as a very patriarchal uh, uh, mother in a family that where the father is missing, of course, but uh, this is opposed to a young man struggling to evolve from, from its roots. How much does that uh, metaphorically um, underline Estonia back in the Soviet Union and now that is independent. Maybe it's a far stretch. Mm -hmm. 
Next question. <laughs> yeah? I think you should repeat the question. I uh, yeah. didn't catch it. Yeah, w what, or, or let's put it this way, the relationship between Raphael and his mom as opposed to an older generation, the past and the present and future, what um, does it mean for you, and how, how important is it in the in the whole story? The relation between mom. Okay, uh, <laughs> but uh, um, as I know, the older generation, they they, they were more like an atheist because uh, of Stalin time, and and they afraid of. Uh, to go to churches and, 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 and to express kind of religious feelings. And uh, um, maybe in the, in, in, there was kind of renaissance in the 70s when uh, young people found, found um, kind of uh, spiritual, uh, spiritual things. Um, as I read, uh, as it was in the book. So, uh, yeah, um, the mother uh, um, has a fear that uh, maybe his son will be will be uh, arrested. Uh, so it it was kind of fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and can you comment on the on the mad uh, guy character in Chain? How how did you come up with that? Uh? Um, yeah, and um, uh, there is a certain uh, tradition in, in uh, Ru especially Russian Orthodox, uh, called Urodivay. It means uh, holy fool, uh, and uh, this character um, was also kind of holy fool. Uh, and uh, there, there was two two ways. Uh, one. Uh, 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 is when you are really sick or ill, kind of mad, mad yeah, like a, if you had kind of mental 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 illness. But the, another way is if you are playing fool, and this is uh, my character. Uh, he's playing fool, uh, and um, maybe this uh, playing fool means kind of uh, I don't kind of liberation. Liberation, uh, uh, mind liberation, to, to, f to feel more with heart and, and not to think about uh, so rationally, uh, because uh, mm, the religion is very, very sensi sensible and, and complicated theme. Uh, 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 and um, when when I was in the monastery, uh, in Russian monastery, one uh, monk said that um, there is no way to put together earth and heaven without sense of absurd. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Are there any questions from the audience? Je voudrais vous féliciter. C'était très beau de vous voir ici, et surtout à tout. Alors, la question, ce serait pour vous, c'est pourquoi vous savez cet avis avec les chaînes Chaînes Ce sont des chaînes Oui, mais je pense que c'est... Oui, mais je pense que c'est... Et parce que c'est celui qui était dehors, il avait toujours des chaînes. The, the fool, uh, um, yeah, why does he have all the chains? And uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, the suffering is, uh, the physical ascetism and suffering is important in, uh, in orthodoxy. And even in, in Catholicism, as I know, and uh, they're wearing very heavy, heavy chains just for suffering. Uh, or uh, for uh, ascetism. Um. Any other questions? 
There is one. Eh, ah. Et l'autre chose, eh, j'aimerais un peu comprendre qu'est-ce que c'était derrière. Parce que la Bible, je la connais. Give us, puis, give us one minute to take uh, translation. translation. Yes. Le film, il y a beaucoup de choses qui, qui parlent de la Bible. Et le message, à peu près, c'est vous dire aussi que la la prière, la, prière, la, prière, la prière, la prière et la naissance en importance. Ce que mes, il y a quelque chose que vous voulez aussi, vous voyez, en tout au fond, ou je ne sais pas, dans cette film. Yes, uh, you, you could repeat it. Uh, the prayer is yes. Uh, and what the question was? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we didn't get the question because it was the wrong channel here. Dans le film, on pourrait dire. Dans le film, on pourrait dire quand l'artiste il avait le boulet que sa voiture il marche, elle devait prier. Et ça marchait, ça, ça marchait à nouveau. Mm -hmm. Et yes. lui aussi, quand lui va, il montrait euh, c'est où c'est le péché, c'est dans tes pensées, toujours à les autres. Mais la, euh, à, 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 la, la finale aussi, c'est qui a fait, c'est pourquoi que c'est la prière qui change les choses. Il y a un message là dedans pour les personnes qui ont vu le, le, le film de. de Mm -hmm. Yes, really, the prayer changes things. Uh, but the, mm, I don't know, message or but uh, um, uh, everyone could pray, even fool, even sinner, even I don't know, uh, whoever. And this is the point that every uh, one has kind of. Um, Uh, image of Christ in in his soul, and if if you even if you are dumb or, or sinner, you could also pray all the time. There there is no sin there. That somehow this film, uh, the the main theme is uh, uh, authenticity, like be you uh, be uh, as you are, be yourself, and. Uh, Uh, the one person can't uh, change mm, the thing, but uh, uh, but God does. And uh, if you pray, maybe uh, the God will help you change. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. I have to ask a question to Ursula. As you played this uh, figure, this personage that was going from the best to himself to become a monk, to the uh, patient of the fighting or to the uh, different aspects of the personality, how did you feel playing that? How was for you? Uh, somehow, um, going into this character or Playing this character somehow uh, was uh, really uh, liberating. Uh, I mean, there was, of course, struggles, but we all do have struggles and uh, they get deeper. But uh, somehow, how Raphael goes through the uh, struggles is, uh, is something uh, beautiful and something that uh, inspires uh, myself myself also to trust uh, 
to trust the life somehow and to, as also Rainer say, as we also probably, many of us try to be ourselves. So it's just a road to, to uh, get closer to yourself and to trust, uh, trust uh, life and something bigger and, uh, and also to feel joy because uh, the character is joyful. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I hope I answered your question. Yeah, I mean the liberation is there because because it's because uh, also the style or or the character is a bit over the top or like a bit uh, uh, eccentric or uh, we're not especially Estonians we're a bit um, calmer and more inside so uh, uh, was lovely to uh, be opened and that we feel as a spectator that's why I put the question so thank, thank you. you. There is a question in the back. Uh, hi, uh, it was a, I had a really good time watching the film and I wanted to ask the three main actors what was the most uh, fun scene to shoot? <laughs> uh, there were many, most of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but mm, there are different kinds of fun. One fun is the wire work, for example, when we fought with uh, Ursel in the uh, catacombs. Uh, the uh, feeling of flying through the air with some heavy guy lifting you up with his own strength <laughs> and you're hanging by a thread of like a half a centimeter thick and you have to put all your trust on that person <laughs> It's, uh, it makes you feel alive <laughs> and thankful. And, uh, but uh, the entire thing was safe, just to tell you. We had a great stunt coordinator, uh, Enar Darmo, who was great with it. And I liked the long takes, which were cut up for this movie, but I think we filmed a lot of scenes like that uh, from beginning till end were like eight or nine or 10 minutes. These were really fun to do because the dragging of that scene it was like empowering and I had a great partner so it was fun okay um, I have a question that maybe ju just uh, one moment I think oh, uh, yeah Esther uh, yes uh, Maybe it was um, harder to build the character, and once uh, it was there, it was really enjoyable to do it, even if there were some uh, harder scenes. It's because what uh, Ursel said, that uh, Rainer wants um, this animal to come out, and uh, that's a really nice thing to do. Uh, you're afraid of that, but if somebody says, just let it out, <laughs> then you're like, wow. <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's a really um, liberating feeling. And for me, I think uh, the whole shooting uh, period or the making this movie was like um, a love lesson. Like, uh, I learned m uh, much about love about uh, religion, God, and mostly about love. Yeah, it's also difficult which one was the most fun, but uh, it reminded me that our first shooting day was, uh, <laughs> was a long day. But uh, which was beautiful because somehow everything um, uh, started to happen. It was the scene where uh, we, me and Rita, first meet uh, in the dancing uh, uh, dancing scene, and uh, we had uh, we did some rehearsals before that. We had the choreography, we had uh, everything, and this was somehow uh, 
um, not a miracle, but this I remember really well that this started and and yeah, now we are here. <laughs> Okay, it's a, it's a question that it's a question that may be related to the question of the lady before. So this young character wants to become a monk. So he goes to the monastery, and if I un understood correctly, it, he has to go through different steps. How much are these steps totally invented? And how much are they inspired by the real life? Of course, in, in, a, in a sense, humoristic sense, and in a sense that you would uh, put these different steps or the whole process in derision. Is there a criticism against uh, religion in that movie? Or is it, are those steps totally invented by the filmmaker? Mm, yeah, there is no criticism. Uh, it's <laughs> rather uh, like rock and roll gospel or kung fu gospel. It's just like a song of uh, um, praise. praise, yes, song of praise. But oh, of course, um, if I, I said that uh, many uh, Russian monks were ex-hippies, uh, the first step could be like um, maybe fake, uh, and as uh, um, maybe there was kind of rebellion, uh, and also uh, when uh, Karat uh, Arafail uh, goes uh, to the monastery, he wanted to be. Uh, a kung fu fighter. It's a, f it's a wrong reason to be in the monastery. <laughs> yeah, but every first step could be wrong, uh, and uh, maybe, I don't. M maybe all these monks were, were, uh, as a one priest said, it's it's a little bit um, uh, hidden stuff or hidden uh, hidden. Uh, um, uh, like a sacred, uh, sacred thing. Why people are in the monastery? Everyone has very different reasons. But if you are already there, it means that um, uh, God uh, um, is by behind <laughs> uh, already. So it's to be important. It's important to be there. Even if with with a fake fake uh, reason. Also, one thing that came into my mind hearing this uh, question was that: uh, Did we? How much did we also invent? Uh, just I re remember uh, reading one book. I don't remember if it was also about Raphael. But for example, when he gives away his shoes. This is a, actually should be a real story where in a train station somebody asked uh, for a, from Raphael, from the real Raphael, to uh, have shoes or something else. And then he gave the shoes and went on. So some, some, uh, some things, some parts, they also pouring the fish on the seat is also from uh, Father Raphael, not directly, but not as the scene is, but it happened that there was a girl with the father Raphael at his place, and then there was a small challenges challenges for the girl somehow. Not don't understand me uh, incorrect, but that some things are uh, from uh, real life in that sense. Uh, yeah, I don't know if this is uh, this is somehow like. Uh going for this, but for me it was interesting because we, when we started this film then there was a discussion with different actors and actresses about uh, this uh, story and script and uh, before we started working with Esther, there was an actress who's, uh, who asked like after reading the script that uh, yeah, but it's, uh, the approach is wrong 
uh, like uh, approach to the uh, the uh, feminism or like the approach to the woman, like the way you uh, show the woman. And then I talked to, to Reiner and Reiner was saying, what? But this is the figure of the Orthodox woman. And this was for me, it was li like the first time I actually started thinking about the different approach to uh, feminism or like femininity. And this is not bad at all. So it's kind of like it, it has been going into a very narrow uh, state or like narrow road. And uh, for me, uh, Rainer uh, opened up with uh, this new approach uh, to kind of like relax and have this fantastic orthodox woman in it. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's irony as well. Uh, and irony is a very good thing, I think. Uh, uh, we can, um, we can, uh, there, there are many perspectives, very, uh, controversial perspectives at the same time. Uh, no perspective is, is, is uh, um, uh, wiser or, or better than uh, another one. And that's, that's, that's the way we, how we live. Uh, this is life. We have to uh, 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 um, uh, respect a very different uh, aspects at the same time. Even, even we, we, when they are even controversial. That's the point of irony. I, that's my un, understanding. Any further questions? Yes, thank you all for this great movie. It was really enjoyable. And uh, so thanks a lot, especially for uh, those scenes with women and your irony, it was great. Uh, my question is for you, Reiner. What do you think about obedience in an author's life, in an artist's life? Obedience. Obedience. Humility, yes. Something like what, what I think about humility. As an artist. Obedience, as an artist. <laughs> uh, it's dependent. Uh, if you uh, get an idea, this uh, means that you have to be very, very humble and keep all these information because uh, the idea is very gentle things, uh, uh, very gentle and uh, and uh, uh, this is the, the 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 thing you have to respect your idea. And it, it, it means um, being humble, humble. Uh, but if, um, if you did the rehearsal and uh, maybe uh, some actor or producer or, or, or DOP uh, says something, it's also you, you have to be uh, open-minded, but you have to know why and what you are doing. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, being obe obedient is, is great, I think. Uh, uh. <laughs> Hi, my question would go to uh, Alisa and Amanda. Uh, what do you think how this film is going to go down in Latvia and in Greece? Will the people come to the cinema to watch this type of uh, with the, I think in Latvia with Reiner there's a history because uh, his previous film, November, won Riga International Film Festival and there's a crew of people praising Reiner as director so they're already waiting for the film and now see Seeing it on the on the big screen, I think uh, it definitely. I I expect to go it well. So, so uh, in that sense, it also helped, uh, of course, to raise uh, the funding and to attach the best possible crew because uh, the director is already known in the country. Yeah. <laughs> Well, for us it was very different because obviously we're not in the same region, so I'm particularly proud that we worked. And there's a lot of funny stories about how the Greeks and the Estonians work together <laughs> on the set. Um, but, um, and also we have a very different view of, of orthodoxy because for us it's really part of the states, like uh, the, the church and the state are not really, so we were never suppressed. 
And on a personal point, uh, me being not very religious, um, what's and related to the previous question is that uh, spirituality has not so much to do um, with, it's for everyone. So in my world, uh, we are not very orthodox proper, but uh, Reiner brought out the, the spirituality and, and the different perspective in this from someone coming from somewhere completely different. Um, so I think that's one more thing that maybe is interesting culturally and how we react and, and what we do now. Um, I can tell you that already the festivals in Greece are <laughs> really wanting the movie, so we're going to premiere in, in the fall. And uh, uh, whoever has seen it from the festivals, they were calling me while watching it saying, man, this is great. Uh, it's really entertaining. And, and there's this thing about joy that I'm hopeful translates to everyone and doesn't have to do with uh, obviously, Estonia, where Reiner is very well known. So, although November uh, uh, is remembered in Greece still, it played in the festivals and it was a movie to remember. Are there any other questions? Um, There's one here. May I? Sorry. Um, okay, so for me, a very important sentence was when uh, there was said, I don't know who was it in the film, but there was said that everybody is good. And I found this sentence very central and very, very challenging as well at the same time. And I was wondering whether this was something that you wanted to put forward or whether it was rather something that you really found when talking to monks and which is very central to Orthodox faith in general from your research. Thank you. Uh, as, my, as I know, orthodoxy is not uh, very legal stuff, especially in Estonia. Uh, and there is uh, no rules uh, and even no theology. It's more like um, about liturgy, music, beauty, and, uh, and of course, uh, the Bible uh, is, is also important, but as uh, uh, one um, Saint Siluan from uh, Mont Athos, uh, uh, he lived uh, in the 20th century, it's quite modern, uh, he is quite a uh, new and modern saint. He says that um, uh, you can't understand the Bible and Holy Scripture without um, grace of love. It, it means that you have to have kind of um, a state of mind, a kind of love inside. Then you could understand what, what, what the Bible is about or what's the main point there. Uh, if, if you are reading uh, it just with reason, Maybe it's even disgusting. Yeah, it's even disgusting. <laughs> One more question there. I had an absolutely wonderful time. <laughs> I like your sense of humor, the illusions, everything. So the question is actually, uh, did the gags come up while filming, or do you have somebody who writes who write this? Or, or uh, how do these Yeah, many jokes uh, came from real life. Uh, it was very surpri surprising that uh, the monks are constantly joking. It, it, it's like a, a s lifestyle. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it is true. Because uh, the main thing is uh, joy in Christianity. That behind uh, death there is a eternal life and uh, resur a resurrection. So we are 
are loved and forgiven. So, and it brings kind of joy. And that's maybe why all these um, monastery stories are, are uh, funny stories. Uh, there is no depression, there is no, I don't know, even didactic uh, stuff. But uh, yeah, I took uh, many, many, many jokes from real life, from the monastery life. And w w when I uh, visited the first time the monastery, it was uh, also my uh, personal experience that uh, I, I lo loved a lot. Uh, and I, I uh, immediately realized that I cannot do kind of serious film. Yes, it's according to, to my own experiences. There is one more question, I believe, back there. Thank you very much for that really funny film. I think f for me it's very more difficult to, to do a film that's funny and deep and not dumb than all these problem films I've seen <laughs> here too. And uh, I wanted to ask you if this is the style you, you do films, or... Yes, it's my film, actually. <laughs> it's uh, no, no, uh, it's nobody else. <laughs> did, uh, it's me. No, I thought uh, other films you did. Is, is, is it in the same style? Yeah. Good. Quite, quite. <laughs> then I have to, a, look, to watch this, them all. Yeah, there's no way without humor, even in life, in real life. Very good, uh, very good. <laughs> If you haven't checked out uh, his latest film, uh, there are blasts as well, so go and see November and all the other films. Are there any more questions from the audience in the back? No, he's, no, just, waving. he's just waving somewhere else. <laughs> That's a cool guess. <laughs> so if there are no more questions, I can wrap it up with the final question. The, the film is going to be released in Estonia in December 8th, right? And then, as we heard, in Latvia and Greece, probably in Japan, Finland. Um, in Switzerland? We don't know, hopefully. Hopefully. Um, so the film flirts <laughs> with different genres. If you would, this is an open question to all of you. If you would say what genre it is, or if I you would said already, it's rock and roll gospel, <laughs> or kung fu gospel. It's kung fu gospel. It's quite clear. <laughs> okay, that's a great definition. <laughs> and so, thank you so much for being here for presenting the film in Locarno. I uh, wish you greatest luck with the film internationally and here in Locarno. Thanks again. <laughs>